challenge the patent and invalidate the patent of uh, the patent rolls. So uh, you will see here all the major open source projects are already part of this and they are uh, covered under the definition of Linux systems in the community. So that's what you will see uh, you know, how we have evolved from 2005. All major companies are part of it from across the globe. The advantage of being uh, you know, OIN member and how it reduces your patent risk. You know, it's a level playing field which you get there. And if you see every sector, this slide demonstrates that every sector you are in, we have community members. So whether it is telecom, you understand ORAN is the latest technology, or whether it is automotive sector, automotive grid Linux, or Android Auto, all those things are, uh, you know, uh, projects are uh, welcome. They are already, uh, most of the companies are uh, part of this community. And if you also see here, you know, any industry classification you come into, uh, most of the companies are part of the community. So this will give you a representation of, you know, in whichever sector, automotive, banking, capital goods, computer networking security, computer software, the companies which are part of the uh, network, whether it is internet uh, or information technology services. So across the globe, like you see here TomTom. TomTom Tom. Tom -tom was sued in the past by one of the top uh, proprietary company in the world. They are also a community member. So whether you are in uh, South Korea, you are in whichever part of the world, most of the telecos are already part of the community. So what is the objective? One of the fundamental thing which is done also in Open Invention Network is the concept of co-option. Cooperation on the fundamental technology, which here is Linux and open source, and competition on the services we provide. Let's take the example of Android. Google is part of the community. Google owns many of the patents on Android, but Google doesn't fight on the, those patents. Google's allow, Google allows everybody to use Android, but at the same time, it makes money from the services it provides on top of Android. So there is competition on the services and cooperation on the technology. So that's the concept of co-option which we are advocating. So if you see here, you know, we are also, uh, you know, how we are doing a guardian role of Linux and the open source community. And most of the projects are already part of the community. So if this risk was not mitigated by defensive strategies or communities like Open Invention Network. What would have been the effect? The consequence could have been that money would have been spent on litigation, costly patent litigation across the globe. This money could have been used on innovation. This money could have been used on your employees. This money could have been used on your growth or many, many, many things. So it's very important that companies, projects, communities come together across the globe and collaborate on fundamental technology, which is Linux and open source. And as I said, the membership to the community is free. It takes three seconds to join the community. So, you know, as I said, it's also a global community. So, you know, you can, uh, whichever part of the world you are. So every uh, uh, time, you know, we try to increase the number of uh, packages in the Linux definition of the community. So you will see, uh, since I am in Taiwan, I thought I should talk about hardware design tools also. So these are the newer definition which has been included, packages which has been included uh, in the Open Invention Network community uh, Linux definition. And this will also give you the notable packages globally, which is there. Now, with that, I would move on to the next uh, defensive strategy. So this is called unified patents. So unified patents, unlike OIN, it is little different. So they go and challenge the patent of the patent rolls or the non-practicing entities. They go and litigate against these. Uh, so they don't go after every patent role. They identify the patent role, which is, uh, so they are differentiated in various zones. 
so relevant to this twist uh, topic it is the open source zone so their definition of open source zone includes enterprise productivity communication security systems web all these areas of uh, zones if there is a patent troll or there is a uh, you know threat to the uh, the whole ecosystem they would go and challenge and invalidate the patents so i will also try to give you a gist of the patent litigation or invalidation which has happened on the open source community ecosystem so you'll see lib libre vlc and av1 so these are this were invalidated in the year 2019 then you will also see sep bansi automotive grade linux tizen all this were invalidated so these are the patent trolls unilock sky cloud kcg technologies these are the patent trolls or we call it as non practicing entities uh unified patents went and invalidated their patents so the threat from these patent trolls has been uh, reduced because of this work so the other methodology open source projects and companies can use is defensive publication so even a big biggest company in the world cannot file for patents in all areas of technology because as i said it's costly and it's time consuming so what you can do is for certain things where you also want to make sure that some number somebody else in the world also doesn't go and file a patent on that subject matter and restrict others you can do a defensive publication so what is a defensive publication a defensive publication is just a record so that uh, a prior art is created so once a prior art is created novelty is lost in that patent filing so let's say i file a uh, do a defensive publication so in a defensive publication you will see it provides the description and artwork of the invention so that the and it enters the public domain so once it enters the public domain uh, a prior art is created once there is prior art novelty is lost for a patent to be uh, granted novelty is the fundamental requirement across the globe so this way it this is the low cost low time consuming uh, method to ensure that nobody gets a patent on that subject matter you you must also may not be interested in filing for a patent because you are an open source project but you also can ensure that others also cannot file for a patent on that subject matter so this disclosure prevents other parties from obtaining a low quality patent or making it a non novel patent so this way this is another approach which can be used by communities across the globe to ensure that there is no uh, low quality patents filed so i have been giving an indication that <laughs> only 10 minutes is left so i think uh, any questions anybody has yeah so uh, let's say we are in a university today so if i do a publication uh, so that's why i've created here uh, it provides a description so in a patent filing generally you would do a detailed description but in case of a uh, uh, you know defensive publication you have to just give a broad description and the artwork and so that uh, it is there in the public domain so let's say uh, in us it is the ip.org if it is there uh, once any patent lawyer files for a patent on that subject matter he immediately knows that okay there is already a, a defensive publication or a prior art created so he will not be getting a patent so he will withdraw his patent application no no it could be anything it could be it it, it, it could be a github repository but the problem with github repository is sometimes the patent examiner may not look into it but ip.org is a sure shot place where uh, the patent examiner will look into it or the patent lawyer would look into it in fact it's there is an increase that's why i gave you that example 
in 2019 and uh, post 2019 see during the covid times what happens is many of the operating companies sold their patent portfolio okay so and universities also sold their patent portfolio so because that's a good way of making money and when these patents are sold by operating companies or universities these are generally bought by patent trolls and once this falls in the hands of patent trolls they then tr try to attack the whole ecosystem because they want their only objective is to make money so there is only an increase in the number of uh, attacks on the community So uh, you are absolutely right. Good, very interesting question. Good that you uh, asked this question. So what happens is most of the cases, if I am an open source project, yeah. I don't have a legal team. Sure. Not to talk about, a, I don't have a patent lawyer. Sure. Okay. This also happens with smaller companies also. Yeah. So when they get a claim, okay, uh, they will see, okay, there is a claim. Two thousand dollars is the license fee per year they will say okay we'll pay because the cost of taking it to a lawyer is much higher sure. and you, even if you take it to a lawyer he has to look into the claim chart and see whether there is an actual infringement so he also has to take spend time on it so what the cheapest uh, thing for the company or the organization is to settle it off but what happens is because of this settlement he knows that Whenever I send a legal notice to him, he will settle off. It's a low-hanging fruit. So this will repeat. So this will encourage and enable the patent trolls to f uh, send more legal notices. So this is an. So this has to end. Unless this is not ending, the patent trolls because see they are like a real estate agent. So you know, unless this ends, this is not. So uh, actions like this are not taken. But you know, most of the companies can't afford to go themselves and invalidate. That's why it's very important that community they come together as a community and fight this problem. So if I understand your question correctly, you are saying that, let's say I'm an open source project, I have infringed something. Yep. Is it correct for me to use somebody else technology? Well, yeah, to yeah. ask your community, like, can I implement it without infringing? Yeah, so, so most of the times, you know, infringement is unknowingly happening, unintentional. Sure. Because it's a huge, <laughs> you know, see, uh, you know when, when you do write code, do you look into you know the US PTO or the Taiwanese PTO to right. look into whether there is an infringement? You can't. Whether there is an infringement in India, Indian Patent Office, or a European Patent Office, you don't. <laughs> it's very difficult. It's very difficult. So most of the times it is unintentional. But once you get the infringement notice, it needs to be compared whether there is actual infringement or not. In most of the cases, there is no actual infringement. Because their claim, uh, the, their uh, uh, claim chart will be so broad that everything under the sun would be <laughs> in that claim chart. So that's the strategy these patent trolls adopt. So that's why you know we get most of them invalidated. 
but this consumes time and money. So that's why as a community, if you work together, things is much better. Uh, you know, in, as an individual or a co smaller company or individual company, it's very expensive. And patent litigation across the globe, it's not just US, uh, you know, Taiwan or India, wherever it you are. Uh, who? So we are a non-profit. Open Invention, huh? Huh? So Open Invention Network is a non-profit. The objective of the community itself is to ensure that the whole open source ecosystem, open source and Linux, is safe from patent tolls. That's our charter. Yeah. So uh, we have. It's a good question. Uh, we have three members, types of members. There's full members. Eight companies across the globe are full members. So if you want to be a full member, it's up to you. You have to make us a one-time contribution of 20 million US dollars. You can be an associate member. Tom Tom and Canonical is an associate member. And you can be a normal member. So Microsoft three years back joined us as a member. So you can be, uh, you know, you, you can be a free member also. There is no no obligation to make pay. So that's how we manage with our function of the community and also buying patents, because we should have a defensive war chest of patents. Thank you and Chichi. <laughs> so my colleague also is there from Open Invention Network. He's the wizard of Taiwan. So any questions you can uh, no. <laughs> Test. Thank you. 
想说，我就把网址输入一下， okay, okay. 开一个网页应该就可以了。Okay, okay. 然后，请用这个麦克风做。没有，上一个讲师他不用麦克风。嗯。就是我们给他。哦，好，我都可以配合，没关系。是是是没有录到？对啊，就很糗。完全没有声音，没有录到声音，也太惨了吧！因为上一个讲师不用麦克风。哦，我靠！哦，我靠！而且前面还没录到。没关系，刚刚有这波表动超好 ，OK， 非常舒服，谢谢，谢谢谢谢。然后去介绍一位阿彩的，好啊，介绍介绍我们的主持人王丽萍来这边，是男生的。哦，不是啦，那我那个写错了，阿彩是。
OK， 大家好，我是下一场议程主持人 Beauty。那我们接下来议程是欢迎我们的农业开放资料社群的阿才，他会来向我们介绍就是农业病害影像资料库的一些呃相关的内容，大概就是应该是用影像去做一些农业上的议题嘛。那我个人觉得这是一个非常有意思的呃题目，然后同时也可以帮助台湾很多农友或是一些。在呃农业相关产业的人，那让我们来看看阿才他们怎么做到用影像资料去帮助我们的农友们改善他们的一些生活的痛点。谢谢阿才。你是帮你是用中文还是英文？你当时填的时候，我当时是填英文，当时填英文吗？所以你要用英文讲吗？我我准你们你们你都可以，你也可以准备英文。看有没有外国人。欸、所以我如果我我如果你讲你讲中文是。会比较困难吗？还是不会？不是，都都可以哦。Oh, 你们想听英文还是中文？来，中文举手。OK， 中文。我可以翻翻一翻，我可以 use， 我我可以 use English。OK， 好，那大家就当做练习音听了，好不好？那我速度会慢一点，英文的话，那那个时间超过快到的时候跟我说一下，对不对 ？OK， 呃、uh, ，Welcome， <laughs> my name is 阿才。Uh, my name is Chinese name is Zhou Guoxin. Uh, English name is Nancy, but in Taiwan everyone call me Atai. Uh, I'm work. I'm. I work. I work for ATRI. ATRI. It's a, a non-profit organization in Xinzhou city. And uh, today I'm going to share our one-year project called A Daddy. Uh, it's a, a collab. Collaborative project for agricultural image database. So you can see the brief. Uh, brief is AD, and now it's open up. So if you have interest in to becoming our members, you can uh, contact with me. Uh, I will. I will do brief introduction for myself. Okay. Uh, I am the principal investigator in A Tree. Agricultural Technology Research Institute. Our institute is located at Xinzhou City, with a beautiful seashore. You can see Xiangshan City, very beautiful, Xibing Gong, Xibing Feng Jing Chu. I'm graduate from uh, National Taiwan University, so I put uh, my photo here. With uh, you can see beautiful rice field. And uh, after I graduate from agronomy. Oh, I work for A3 as a, a data analyst since to uh, since 2018. My project is focused on text mining, image recognition, and digital transformation for agriculture. Uh, but now, uh, I think people in Taiwan we are getting uh, familiar with the uh, Jingling Jiantan, net zero emission management. And I, so I have new role, uh, ESG report consultant. I help the, my client to count the greenhouse gas emission and try and to help them to write the ESG report. Yongxu uh, Baogao Su, environmental, environment, so, uh, society, and uh, government. Eh, government, 对，就是 E 就是环境 ，S 是社会 ，G 是治理。In ESG report consultant, and before 2022, I am the product manager of A Daddy, which is the today's I'm going to share the story. And uh, at the beginning, I uh, when I came to A Tree, I uh, I organized a text mining project. We use the text mining technique to collect the. Uh, the literature, agricultural research literature from the website. And we use text mining to a web crawling, uh, web crawling technique to collect those wording data. And then we do the statistic analysis and try to uh, count the, which is the uh, most frequently a topic. And w uh, what is the hot topics in the 
in the agricultural research area. Okay, and uh, so since since 2020, I I share my, our project for this uh, for the text mining uh, project and sh we, uh, in the Coast Cup conference. And that's why we organized the KUFA community, a commu community of open data for agriculture, KUFA. And this is the first year of conference in, uh, with, uh, with the Coast Cup, uh, Coast Cup yeah, conference. And then uh, we uh, started to 2020, and now it's, it's the fourth year fourth year's com conference. Mm. And the first, first year we organized this conference with the Chapa company called Elite, Elite Keji. And now we have more members, such as uh, Kaohsiung City <laughs> Agricultural Bureau, it's a governmental organization. And we also have uh, the members uh, our member also include some uh, non-profit project, and also the company from IT industry, data and uh, from, so I would quickly uh, introduce the topic in each year of in our KUFA community. So the first year we focus on the possibility of open data in agriculture, so which means we want to let m more people to know open data can help us to improve the agricultural management and make farmer uh, get more, uh, make eh, earn more money. <laughs> and the second year, two thousand twenty-one, the topic is focused on the data, data and place making, it's, it's a big issue because in the, con con in the countryside, more and more young people uh, leave, the, leave their hometown to the city. So we will see the countryside, the farmer will, uh, in Taiwan, the farmer is very old, usually it's very old, over, usually the age in, age of farmer is over 50 or 60 years old. And so in, in, in 2021, we have uh, this conference to discuss how can, we, uh, how can we let young people stay in the, farmer, uh, in the countryside uh, by the data, open data. And the, in 2022, last year, we, we focused on the intelligent agriculture and the business model. So Last year, we uh, we invited not only governmental organization but also uh, uh, IT company, and and we invited them to share their experience and share their business model. And to this year's, because of the governmental policy, Jingling, uh, so so we focus on the net zero, uh, digital transformation, and net zero. Promo promotion, yes. Yeah. We try to use the uh, try to use digital technology to help the farmer to count the greenhouse gas emission and try to help them to lower down their greenhouse gas emissions. And this uh, this conference will held tomorrow. 明天,五五五零九会议是一整天的. <laughs> okay, and uh. Today, uh, this year, we focus on the net zero emission and the digital transformation uh, because we, s we found out that when we talk about the, uh, this net zero emission issue, there are a lot of data we have to uh, maintain and we have to collect. Well, uh, for example, we have to collect the uh, record of when farmer do spread the fertilizer or when farmer spread the pesticide, they have to re record make it record and make it to become a doc document. Okay, so, and not after they uh, collect those documents, we have to count or do the uh, statistic analysis and try to count out 
uh, how many greenhouse gas they produce during the farm system. And this is really important when they have the digital tools. And because if the farmers have digital tools, they can, uh, they can evaluate the greenhouse gas emi emission rate more efficiently. So that's, the, that's today, uh, this year's topic. And now I want to uh, focus on the, our main purpose to today, uh, the intelligent agriculture in Taiwan. And what in the, I will talk about the situation now in Taiwan and then to, to, uh, to say why, to claim why we want to start up this project. Uh, since the government, C, uh, COA, Nong Ye Wei Yong Hui, Council of Agriculture, uh, start up to promoting intelligent agriculture maybe 10 years ago. And now we will see uh, the, the people in the city, such as you guys may think about, oh, intelligent agriculture, oh, you must have robot, and must have uh, so fancy equipment. Yes, that's the news, some digital news, they will tell you. But now in Taiwan, we still have a lot of, we still need a lot of lab labor work. Uh, so especially in southern part of Taiwan and in the fruit industry and the vegetable industry. Okay, so that's the distance, the gap between the truth and the ideal image. Uh, somehow we, st we are now really have some, we call lending technology. Oh, uh, uh, when we say the lending te technologies means you can see, really see the application in the farm. Okay, now the future farming image. Okay, so such as the UAV, UAV, vehicle drone, I forgot, UAV, and uh, uh, some automatic machine, uh, farming machine. Yes, so yes, we do have intelligent agriculture, but most, most of them are uh, most of our equipment, uh, not the decision-making perspective, and uh, so that, that that's the the problem we faced. Like in Taiwan, digital agriculture usually you can see is the sensing all kinds of sensing equipment or auto automobile machinery, but uh, and yeah. Mean, meanwhile, this device can help us to get a lot of data, like the temperature like the rain field or like the, uh, the GPS record. But what is the next? Because we already get so much, so many, uh, so amount of data, image data, number numeric data, or the, the text data. But how, how can we uh, apply this data to more meaningful, uh, meaningful tools or meaningful results? Okay, so in Taiwan, we, when we, uh, when we discuss the in intelligent agriculture, we focus on the four perspective. The one first is the farming system, or the, we call the environment, and the second is the sensing part, or such as the all kinds of sensor, remoting system, and the third part is networking, like for three uh, G, four G, five G, any, and you can see. The cost and the speed and the is the the cost of network is getting really really down. 就是我们那个现在通讯的成本是越来越低了。哦 ，so uh, now we are facing about uh once the cost of network is really low, which means we can uh get more data from the farm and the farming system. So how do we use those big data? And now, yeah, that, 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 that is true because in we, when we uh, discuss with a farmer, they say, oh, I got a lot of data, 10 years data, 20 years of data, hundreds, thousands of images, all kinds of images. But how can we deal with those big data? Okay, so uh, the, our project, A Daddy, is focused on uh, we can make if if we have a tools to let farmer easily to do the uh, clean up a fir the first first step of data analysis, which means the clean, clean cleaning the data cleaning, and we 
if we can, if they, if the farmer can use those tools to make their da their data to become standardized data, oh, that that is that may can help us to uh, apply those big data and try really can help the farmer to improve their management. So uh, in A3, we form a bio ICT research team. Our team involved in the uh, swine pig, pig disease and cow disease, diary cow, and also the tomato disease. And I, my, I played a role in, uh, in project manager or product manager, or whatever. <laughs> it's a, a very complicated and very exhausted <laughs> work. Okay, so and the, and the lead of the, this project is Dr. Chen, um, 动物所的所长. Okay, so we want to develop an agri AI solution tech because now we get uh, we have a lot of data, but those data need to be cleaned up and need to be standardized, and so that the AI uh, model team can build use the data to train the AI model. Okay, so this is the the. Uh, our ADADI platform called Aliens Database for Agricultural Disease Image, so we call it ADADI. And you can see it's an alien database, which means uh, you have to send us an application to become our aliens, and you are a member. You can be a one of our members. And uh, so you can send me a, a document to apply a count, okay. And then you can upload. the. Our platform has, there are three, three, three major functions of ADADI. The first, first part is uh, data uploading. And if anyone can upload the data with the correct ta tagging. So you can see uh, this tagging, you can, uh, you can customize the format of this tagging. And the data will, uh, you can upload with no limitation like 4K H, uh, high resolution image. And as long as you, ta uh, you make the right tagging with domain knowledge. Okay. And you can see uh, after, you, uh, after, after uploading the data, you can make the tagging such as the species of the plants or species of the animals or any kinds of uh, uh, mm, any kind of animals, <laughs> okay. And in our project, because I uh, just I just like I said, this is the one year old uh, one year project, okay. So I will show f show one of our uh, aliens. For example, this is the tomato uh, tomato part, and you can see the you. The you can upload the data and then make the tagging with leaves, ye pian, and also the date and also the uh, the disease of name if you know. And if you don't, if you not are not sure which disease, you can just choose unknown. Okay, and this the uh, there are another description of this. Uh, these photos, such as the shape of the disease or the symptom of the disease. Okay. And we also use RWD, uh, RWD format, which may we want to, uh, in just in case the ext extension and the flexibility of our platform. So in the future, we hope we can, everyone can Use can upload the data and make the tagging on on the by their mobile device. And the other part, the second part, we focus. We try to. Uh, I think is the most important part is the collaboration part, because after you upload the data, we have we have the expert. The expert will uh, the the expert will revise the, 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 the tagging with the right tagging. So if someone do the wrong tag, the expert will revise, make the re revisement. So in this process, 
the expert uh, somehow they join the data cleaning process and make the data more uh, more powerful by adding their not domain knowledge. So I this the uh, that is also my favorite part because uh, now all the database in agriculture f just uh, just provide the upload and storage function. But in ADADI, we have the uh, expert role to revise the uh, revise the revise the tagging with the correct knowledge. Okay. And all the data will storage in NRI Labs. Uh, it, it is National Center of High High Performance Computing, Guowang Zhongxin, in Zunan, located at Zunan. It's also a non-profit, non-profit organization, okay. and all the data you can uh, see at the this page at the my gallery, just like the the just like the Flickr or your Facebook account, you have the photo gallery, and the data will for will st storage by SQL language. And in all the member in our alien can download others' photos. Okay. Uh, okay. As if you want to download the photos from another members, you have to, uh, you have first you have to, uh, you, you have to make sure you have the scores. And one, so the easy, the easily way you can get the scores is you upload data, one When you upload data, you can download the data from another, okay? But also, if you have money, you can buy the data uh, through, through the platform. So, and that's the business strategy for us. Uh, in the ADADI platform, we have three characters. One is uh, the member, which which usually is the farm, far, which usually is the farmer. They can the farmers can upload the data and share the data. And the second rule is expert, which they can donate their domain knowledge and try to uh, revise the uh, revise the photo with the correct uh, correct take taking. And the second uh, and the third rule is, uh, and someone need the correct data and correct taking and the high quality uh, agricultural data. Okay, so we hope that uh, the the collaboration, uh, the collaboration part process and this sh uh, sharing this sharing machine sharing machinery can be uh, more sufficient and. And through and by those three kinds of rules, we can make uh, we can gather up and form a lead or uh, form an alliance. So that's why we call the pla platform alliance database. Okay. And uh, the leader of the alliance, they have the authority to decide the initial information of the, the of the column for the photos and the leader of aliens they he or she should organize the aliens and find a uh, find out uh, find at least six members okay and and also the the, the leader the leader of the aliens they can decide it, uh, which photo should be sent to which expert Okay, so that's the example. You can see we already have uh, pig disease aliens. We have the dairy cow and tomatoes for plants. So you can see the this is the uh, this is the <laughs> assign. Okay, this is the assign page uh, of a daddy, and the uh, and the leader of aliens they can just choose which photos and to assign the to the proper uh, suitable expert to revise the tagging okay and if you want to join us uh, you can contact with me because I am the contact person okay so 
now we still use uh, we it's open, but you still have to send us a application for for document and let us know what is your purpose and which in the future we will use those data for any uh, for what kind of uh, situations and uh, in oh we also considering the copyright we also uh, make the CC CC so clarity CC clarification <laughs> you can choose uh, you can you can choose uh, any kinds of uh, intellectual <laughs> you can see any kinds of IPR <laughs> License IPR, yeah, and you can see by CC by NC CC by whatever. <laughs> okay, and in our in our project, we focus on the uh, the sharing and the business model of a daddy. Uh, for example, if someone called Mr. Otani, upload a photo from from his smartphone. And with, as long as he make the right tagging and as uh, and, and this photo assigned to the expert and the expert do the revisement, after this process, progress, the uh, Mr. Otani can get the score, and he can use the, this score to exchange and the photos from another uh, another member in our alliance. And if also, that is the total uh, service of a daddy. And if oh, Mr. Otani cannot can uh, can cannot get cannot up, uh, okay. If Mr. Otani don't have any kind of image, he or she can pay for <laughs> other members to buy the photos. Okay, and because this. Uh, we want to use a daddy platform to 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 fasten up the digital transformation in agriculture and so the next step will be the data driven digital transformations we found out a lot of farmers they want to involve in uh, they, they want to use digital tools but they don't understand any kinds of uh, uh, like Python or C core language, and all they have, all, all they can do is uh, serve from the internet, upload with some uh, GUI interface, and share their fo photos. So we de develop these digital tools to help the uh, we call Marco Marco They don't uh, they don't need to understand or to learn any kind of uh, language. But they c as long as they just all they have to do just upload from their smartphone and the standardized uh, process and the collaboration process will be done through the a daddy platform. So we have four functions. One is pre-cleaning the data. The second is the data will be cross top with domain. Uh, the member will. The member in our alien can cross talk with domain expert by collaboration. Oh sorry, it's a typo. Collaboration uh, pro progress, and with the tagging progress, the expert can um, can share their knowledge through the tagging, and then this knowledge can can help the AI develop teams to uh, to training the AI model for image recognition. And to, and also because it's fr if, if you if you don't have money, you can still upload your data to get another photos. So which means the platform can encourage people to ex ex exchange the image. And the the core value of our uh, platform is to want to build up an ecosystem for agri data. And uh, and the second part is uh, and the other value of this A Daddy platform is we want to lead the AI, 
And because we train the AI by the domain knowledge from the tagging process. And after we training the data, we can learn more from the AI model. Okay, so uh, thanks for your listening. So if you have, if you <laughs> are playing Pokemon Go, you can add me, <laughs> add me friends. <laughs> okay, we can exchange gifts. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I think. Oh, oh, please. Oh, 成效嘛，就是我们分两个部分好了。第一个是 AI 训练的部分，就我们确实是有拿有 tagging 过，因为它是一个分类的概念，就是诶，影像辨识它有。不同种嘛，有一个是分类，然后有一个是边缘辨识吧。那我们这个主要是分类。那我们确实是有先做分类完之后，然后用一个 VIT VIT model 的 frame， 然后我们去测试说有标签，然后把标签再去作为特征再次学习之后，确实是有呃有有增加它模型辨识的准确率。然后这是在猪的病害有发现这个状况，但是其实老实说，我们也发现不是每一种。作物都适合，因为像植物的话，好像这个就会比较比较没有那么明有效。对，对，对。然后你也可以发现，像猪病害或是动物的病害，因为我们这个照片是从兽医师来的，所以兽医师就很严谨，他拍照的时候就是都会讲，你看都会依照那个那个标准的拍照模式，所以影像辨识的部分也会比较容易。那植物的话，它有时候会有。呃，一张就一一个叶子，或是远景、近景的问题，对，所以其实某种某种程度来说，在资料收集的部分，我们会用联盟制，也是这样，让联盟的盟主去决定说，一个照片你应该标准的照片是长什么样子，然后必须有什么样的标注。那其实盟主很重要，是他。他可以去决定很多事情，所以我们就是希望某一个大带小一个盟主带很多个成员，然后由盟主去决定那个照片应该是长什么样子，然后这样 AI 后面的 AI 团队在做影像辨识的训练的时候，他就比较可以做得出那个 AI 是真的可以辨识的出东西的,的成果。那目前的成果，我们现在就是或因为这是一年期的计划，我们大概就是三个领域：猪。牛、番茄，然后我们总共现在是大概五十个成员，然后三个盟主这样。那大部分都是老师或是研究机构的人，对。那嗯，对啊。如果说像刚刚有其他的那个 Coast Cup 的,的人，也许想要想要加入的话，就是基本上联络人是我，然后我们会开一个专门给 Coast Cup 的的联盟这样子。嗯，对对对，大家可以去试用，但但希望大家都是妥善的试用啊，不要传一些奇奇怪怪的照片，对。对。哦， oh, 对啊，就我们这边就是会有三个角色，所以盟主盟主就很重要，因为那个盟主他要去决定说哪些人是专家，然后盟主自己就就要去。其实我们就是有一个自同台审查的概念，就像论文同台审查。那如果我们我们平台的管理者，我们发现这个盟主都没有在管理，然后大家都乱传照片。然后就只是为了拿其他人照片的时候，我们其实平台就有这个权利去把这个盟主收回来，这样。很大量的工，对啊，就是，但是总比因为其实没有这个平没有这个工具的话，现在都是大家就是 Excel 写一写嘛，这样会很辛苦，对。如果大家还有任何问题的话，可以再跟阿才联络。那感谢大家参与本场议程，让我们欢迎，就是等下还有一场议程，欢迎再继续等待下一场议程到来。同一个 spec 嘛，都是一个很标准的照片。再来就是未来会把现在原本是专家，就是人工要去勾嘛。未来我们会装一个套件，是可以自己去辨识那个病症的外观。哦、可是像你们病辨识病症外观，有一个会不会遇到就是你没有办法去辨识它到底是病症还是花纹的问题啊？
所以这又变成是说，当我今天我专家的目标很明确，是我要开发一个可以辨识病理影像的 model 的时候，我们的照片收集就会是典型病症。哦、oh, ，就是它一定会出现那个状、那个病症的照片。对对对，是跟医、跟跟医疗蛮像，但是因为植物它更复杂是，呃，因为植物病症它可能它有时候是是一样的。对，它第一个它你到是被虫咬还是被菌菌感染，还是说它是讲生理伤害，它只是它其实也没有生病，它只是肥料下的少嘛，它就是一个累累的状态。所以，所以我们其实这都只是工，对我来说啦，就它就是一个工具。然后就是收这一行的时候方便啊，有人帮你标。对，像我们跟哎，你们我说我们跟台大那个台大生机系的老师合作，就是学生们现在在收这一台，就是就把那个杆，对对对对，就是不学生都是这样收，没办法。没有啊，就没有一个好的工具这样。因为我我我们这个有一个是说丑音，然后我们就丑音，你说那个就是会有肿肿瘤。啊，对，两百个。叫我练练就可以了。然后是一个呃，工程工呃，你有看过我之前？有有有有。是是 A T E 这个公司的。对对对。不过讲不用讲。对对对对对。这個、呃主要是做那个能源相关的 open source 题目。啊，能源啊，或者是绿绿色化工嘛，对绿绿绿色化学。你说什么东西做 open source？ 不能做 open source。专利。对对，所以所以我会用元用元素，它有哪些元素堆叠起来的？对，像实验或者是模拟，就是在一些在比较基层的一些元素。对，那现在世界上也有把它推出来做 open license 的形状。呃，有一些国际组织有。在哪里看到？介绍讨论这一块。但这个卡比会有。因为绿能电厂是最讨论的题。嗯，对啊，我也不是挑最 popular 的题目，是挑跟自己刚好刚好人生的经历有相关。
喂，喂，喂。OK， 因为我们隔壁一层在玩 BOF 了，所以我稍微关一下门。OK， 好，嗯、uh, ，Thank you for coming this session. And our speaker Liam is、uh, talking about the green technology in open source. So let's welcome him. 要用用这个。喂，啊 ，Thank you all. I'm Liam. Uh, today I want to talk about fast implementation of Sustainable technologies by open licensing of intellectual properties. Uh, regarding open licensing, I, I think the most well-known uh, licensing way is Creative Commons by license and uh, BSD. Uh, this is to grant the users to to the free use of the license work, including redistribution and uh, even modification. And in order to tackle the climate crisis, uh, we all want to speed up the implementation of the green technologies and even spread the knowledge to regions or communities which are less resourceful or economically less competitively. Um, but we, we are, of course, on the other hand, we highly appreciate the efforts of the researchers, their achievements and their efforts, and we are not encouraging freeloaders. So uh, today I want to propose a model for research and uh, even business model to spread the results of res research while not discouraging innovation. Uh, you can consider research as a, a roof and there are six foundational pillars. The first two pillars are literature review and uh, hypothesis formulation. And uh, this, these two are familiar to researchers who are, who are writing a thesis, but they are not specific to writing a thesis. In the realm of pattern, you have to also study the literature, you have to review the literature, you have to formulate the hypothesis in order to draft a pattern map or to know better about the prior arts. And the middle two pillars uh, here, one is modeling, simulation, and analysis. The other one is experiments. These two pillars are, um, are the main dish in today's discussion. And uh, the other pillar optimization, you can consider it as a iterative process among modeling, simulation, analysis, and experiments. And uh, optimization is very specific to, specific to individual research because uh, you may borrow someone else's modeling simulation or experiment to build up your own research, but optimization is very uh, specific to your own research. That is, that is what optimization is. And interpretation and discussion is the way you present and uh, dis uh, the way you present your research results to the public. So you can build your own research based on other simulation and experiments, uh, avoiding duplicate efforts and reducing repetitive investments. This is uh, uh, an experimental force data of a restrained ROV, uh, which is remotely operated vehicle. Uh, this open data is released by uh, Edinburgh University in the website 
called data share. And you can see from the photo there is an ROV attached to a frame via eight tethers. And the frame is to simulate a boat. If you want the ROV to freely explore the environment, of course you don't want, want it to, to be to be restrained by a boat, but sometimes you, you need to you need it to perform a specific task. And you need stable transmission of power and data. That, that is when uh, an ROV has to be restrained by a boat. And the aim of this experiment is to quantify hydrodynamic forces acting on a restrained remotely operated vehicle. Under the following situations, uh, one situation is uh, this water tank will produce regular and uh, irregular waves. And the other situation is when the ROV's propellers were activated at different rotation speeds. So that is the aim of the experiment. And the application is for the underwater vehicle design and control. Uh, the experiment is to use the collected data set as benchmark to test the performance of the ROV, validate numerical investigation. And uh, you use this experimental force data, you can also develop and refine algorithms for position control. You, you know that in order to control the position and orientation of the uh, ROV, you can consider this force data as your foundation to build your own research So if you are the, no matter you are, you are the publisher or you are the user, uh, what is the consideration of experiment open data? Uh, there are the following items uh, you, can, you should consider. There are data type, data structure, and metadata is the description of data. This includes additional information about the data itself, such as when and how it was collected, who collected it, the equipment or methods used, units of measure, etc. Metadata is crucial for interpreting the data correctly and ensuring its valid use. Uh, there are also file format, data quality, licensing and usage rights, and interoperability. Interoperability is the ability of the data to be used in different systems, platforms, and software. Uh, of course, in this case, there is a, a licensing agreement to it. Uh, it is the typical Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International Public License. And uh, the rights and conditions are very familiar to, to us. And in some of the cases, there will be optional restrictions, like a uh, licensor might choose to apply to the licensed material, such as the non-commercial and non-derivatives restrictions, but these two restrictions are not applied in this case. Okay. Uh, in, in order to proceed with my discussion, there are some engineering disciplines in my focus. Uh, there are green chemistry, green chemical process, material, environment engineering, and energy uh, system. And we can try to map them with SDG, SDGs. Uh, let's take environmental engineering, for example. This field primarily supports SDGs related to environmental protection and sustainability. For instance, it contributes to SDG 6, clean water and sanitation through developing water treatment system. And SDG 11, sustainable cities and communities through sustainable urban planning. And SDG 13, climate action by designing climate resilient infrastructure. And you can apply this uh, mapping methodologies to other 
disciplines. Each of these disciplines intersects with other SDGs as well, given the interconnected nature of sustain sustainable development. Also, many of the new innovative solutions to global challenges will require the integrated efforts of all these disciplines. Apart from the experiment, open data, uh, now we come to the point, modeling, simulation, and analysis. Um, first, let me uh, explain what, it, what modeling is. Modeling is the process of creating a mathematical representation of a system, such as a chemical reactor or an energy grid based on physical laws, experimental data, and logical assumptions. Uh, in the realm of green chemical engineering, models can be used to understand the behavior of complex systems and to predict their responses to various inputs. And what is simulation? Simulation, once a model is created, it can be used to simulate the system's behavior under various conditions. This involves numerically solving the model's equations to predict how the system will respond to different inputs over time. MATLAB is a widely used tool for such simulations, providing various built-in functions and toolboxes for these purposes. And modeling is indeed a process of transforming a real-world system into a mathematical representation. This model will typically contain variables and equations that capture the essential characteristics and behavior of the system, whether it be physical, chemical, biological, or something else. And once the model is established, it can indeed be viewed as a mathematical problem from the perspective of simulation. The simulation will use the numerical methods to solve the equations that describe the model, producing a prediction of the system's behavior over time or under various conditions. However, it's important to remember that while the simulation is a mathematical exercise, the model it is based on is a simplification of the real world. The model's accuracy will depend on how well its assumptions and simplifications match the real system. So even though the simulation is based on mathematics, interpreting the results and relating them back to the real world requires understanding of the original system. And now I want to uh, introduce some very commonly seen computeri computerization tools for modeling, simulation, and analysis. Uh, first is MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB and its companion tool, Simulink, provides a rich, well-documented, and widely used platform for simulation and model-based design. They are known for their use, ease of use, visualization capabilities, and extensive library of pre-built blo blocks and toolboxes, which can make it easier to set up and run complex simulations and also interpret the results. And uh, another, another important tool is uh, Python. I, be I believe most of you have heard, heard of that, but what, what its role in simulation and modeling. MATLAB and Python, both powerful computational tools, have their own unique strengths which make them individually suitable for various tasks in chemical engineering and energy research. However, it's their combination that can truly enhance the efficiency and the scope of these research areas. MATLAB has been the standard in the engineering and applied sciences communities for years due to its powerful toolboxes and simplified coding language. On the other hand, Python is a general, general purpose language that has been gaining popularity in scientific computing due to its readability, flexibility, and a vast array of scientific libraries available, such as NumPy, SciPy, and Pandas. Moreover, Python excels in data analysis and visualization with libraries like 
Matplotlib and Seaborn. Importantly, Python's strong capabilities in machine learning and AI with libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch provide a great advantage in predictive modeling and optimization tasks. So these two languages can work together in several ways. For instance, you can call MATLAB function from Python using the MATLAB engine API for Python, thereby accessing MATLAB's specialized toolboxes while retaining Python's advantages. Similarly, you can use MATLAB's Python command interface to call Python functions directly from MATLAB. So uh, in a typical workflow, one might use Python for data collection, pre-processing, and exploratory analysis due to its powerful libraries and ease of handling large data sets. Then they might switch to MATLAB for the modeling and simulation stage, utilizing its advanced toolboxes and Simulink. Finally, they might go back to Python for further analysis, visualization of results or machine learning tasks. And finally, there are two uh, computational tools I want to make examples of. Uh, there are Cantera and Pyomo. Uh, in recent years, there has, has been some an increase in Python-based simulation tools for chemical engineering and energy research, such as Cantera and Pyomo. Cantera is particularly good at modeling for chemical engineering and thermodynamics. Pyomo is a powerful optimization tool. These tools offer functionalities similar to those found in MATLAB and can interact with other Python libraries, allowing for integrated workflows within Python. Um, Besides modeling, simulation, and analysis, there are also uh, topics about data analysis and algorithm development. Uh, data analysis refers to inspecting, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data with the goal of discovering useful information, drawing conclusions, and supporting decision making. It's a crucial step in interpreting the results of simulations or optimizing parameters in a model. MATLAB, with its extensive suite of statistical and analytical tools, is often used for this purpose. And algorithm development. Algorithms are step-by-step -step procedures for calculation. Algorithm development involves creating new methods or improving existing ones to perform a specific task more efficiently or effectively. In the context of green chemical engineering and energy, this might involve developing new algorithms for more accurate modeling of chemical reactions or for faster solutions to optimization problems. MATLAB is a preferred tool for many researchers for developing, testing, and implementing such algorithms. Uh, there is some more about the interrelationship between data analysis and algorithm development. First, you can consider the results of the data analysis are the inputs for algorithm development. For example, uh, studying the data from a chemical reaction might lead to the development of a new algorithm that more accurately predict reaction rates under different conditions. And after the algorithm is developed, you can gain more insight on the data. So this is also an iterative process between data analysis and algorithm development. And the goal of the algorithm is to to improve uh, the understanding of model and also for a faster solution to optimization. For example, interpret sensor data from a chemical process, identify patterns that correspond to inefficient operation or waste production, and suggest adjustments to improve efficiency. And finally, we come to optimization. 
optimization, this process involves finding the best solution from all feasible solutions, where best is defined according to some criterion. This criterion could be, could be to minimize energy consumption or waste generation in a chemical process, for example. Pyomo is particularly used for such optimization problems, providing a powerful and flexible platform to model and solve a wide range of optimization problems. So optimization is the iterative process between modeling and simulation. And, the, and when this iterative process is finished, and which means that we get the best performance against objective functions. For example, uh, when the efficiency is maximized or the waste being minimized. So Pyomo is a powerful optimization tool, but it is not a standalone solution for every step in the modeling, simulation, data analysis, and algorithm development processes. However, Pyomo not, is not typically used for tasks such as simulating physical systems or detailed data analysis. For instance, you, you would typically model a physical system using another tool such as Cantera for chemical reactions or MATLAB, Simulink for control systems. And then you could use Pyomo to solve optimization problems based on that model. Similarly, while Pyomo can help generate valuable data through the optimization process, detailed data analysis might require additional tools or libraries such as Pandas or Matplotlib in Python. In conclusion, while Pyomo is a valuable tool in the toolbox of an engineer, it is typically used in conjunction with other tools and libraries that are more suited to the specific tasks of modeling, simulation, data analysis, and algorithm development. So now I want to talk about the, a better code writing way for open licensing opportunities. Uh, first of all, uh, use Python as the main script language while calling MATLAB functions via, via the MATLAB Engine API is better than you write your main script language in MATLAB and calling the Python libraries. And number two, um, you can use some uh, Python-based open source tool for system modeling, such as Cantera. Um, so, the, but below is the detailed methodologies of doing that. Modeling stage with Cantera. You will first define your model using Cantera within a Python environment. For example, you could define a chemical reaction mechanism or a combustion process. Specify the reactants, products, and relevant conditions. And secondly, exporting to a compatible format. After you've defined your model, you can use Cantera's various output functions to export the model parameters to a format that can be understood by MATLAB. This could be as simple as writing the data to a CSV file or a more complex serialized format. And the uh, simulation stage with MATLAB API. In MATLAB, or a Python script calling MATLAB via the MATLAB Engine API for Python, you can import the model parameters. Once you've imported these parameters into the MATLAB environment, you can use them within MATLAB's powerful suite of numerical simulation tools to simulate the behavior of the system. And number three, use MATLAB Engine API for calling functions from those distinguished toolboxes that other open source tools lack. This API calls on MATLAB libraries, which are proprietary and need a valid MATLAB license to access. And the code is still human readable, and the functions being used, as well as the logic of the script, can be understood. 
You can use good documentation kept in code to gain an understanding of what each function is doing and compare this to the functionality offered by other tools. The MATLAB functions may be utilizing features or characteristics not present in the replacements function, or they might be integrated in a way that makes swapping them out non-trivial. And number four is modularize your code. The reasons of doing that, uh, including first, code maintain maintainability. The first advantage of modular programming is that it increases code maintainability. When you divide your code into modules, you can update or fix errors in one module without disturbing the others, making it, making it easier to manage and update. And there are also code reusability and reduced redundancy, collaboration, open licensing opportunities. And regarding um, my suggestion of the writing way, a better writing way of code, you, uh, first regarding Cantera module, this module could be responsible for defining and exporting chemical models. And you can plan Python preprocessing module. This module would handle reading and data from the Cantera output and preprocessing it for MATLAB. And you can plan MATLAB simulation module. This module would run the simulations based on the preprocessed data. The code in this module will need to be protected if you don't want to share your MATLAB scripts. And there is Pyomo optimization module. This module could define and solve optimization problems based on the simulation results. And there is analysis and post-processing module. This module could handle analysis of the simulation and optimization results, generating plots, computing statistics, etc. And number five is well maintain a good documentation in your code for future possible improvement and replacement. Um, due to the time limit, I probably cannot go through this one by one. There is example script. You can test your code with example script. And testing a test suite to ensure the validity of the code after uh, every time after modification. There are input val validation tests. Validate whether the script correctly handles invalid, out of range, or unexpected input values, such as head temperature, pressure, and concentration of reactants. Finally, you can use MATLAB file exchange platform under a BSD license to share, distribute, and review code if calling MATLAB functions is unavoidable. Okay, tiered pricing scheme for patent utilizing open licensed work. Uh, tiered li pricing scheme proposed in an open license which grants a patent to free use of open license technologies in the beginning, but request different level of financial feedback when different level of commercial profits have been realized. For example, up to 100,000 in revenue from the license technology, no fee, and from 100,000 to 1,000,000 in revenue, 5% of revenues. And beyond that, we, uh, the licensor might request 10% of the revenues. Okay, so uh, due to the time limit, I have to stop here. Um, Maybe we can discuss after this uh, meeting or afterward. Thank you.
I thank you for your question. Uh, first of all, I, I don't have the broad uh, industrial or knowledge background for all industries. So, um, but I think I if one industry uh, is very stringent on the disclosure or dissemination of knowledge, it might have its own reasons. Uh, I think I to change the culture of that industry is very is very difficult. Yeah, but I I can uh, I can advise you about some uh, repositories worldwide, which host the open data, open research data in the world, and uh, uh, so you can get access to more industri industry knowledge through through my sharing. Thank you. If you have a problem with the experience, you can see that 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 you